Bad news on the fitness front. Nearly 70 million Americans are now classified as inactive, or better known as couch potatoes. So here's the question. What do you call children whose parents are couch potatoes? That's right, tater tots. Today's program is entitled American Idol. We'll be right back. Hi, welcome to Abundant Living. This is Curtis Akins, your co-host. I'd like to introduce my beautiful bride of wonderful 18 years of marital bliss, Paula Akins. Oh, okay. I, I thought I was going to say that part, but okay. Yeah, well, I beat you to it. Maybe next wife. program you can okay. say that. His okay. wonderful wife. Yes, wonderful, beautiful. Oh, it's been oh. a wonderful 18 years, hasn't it yes. been? Yes, all right. Praise okay. the Lord. Okay, let's go for another 18. What do you say? That's fine. If Jesus, if Jesus delayed come. his coming. Oh, that's right. All right, that's Only. right. Only. Okay. Okay. Now we got now, some couch potatoes. We got some tater tots. I know you. Got, <laughs> <laughs> we, we need to get them to start we, moving. So yeah, we, yeah, that's yeah, why yeah. we call this program American Idol. Of course, the last name is spelled differently: I D L E, not I D O L. Uh, all right. So I know this is international program, but here in the United States, I think also also programs around the world have different uh, talent programs of singing. So, but here in America, we have American Idol talent show. So called American Idol because we are idol and we need to get them to start moving. Well this is a part of that new series that we're talking That's about true. now and that the uh, the eight natural remedies. Yeah and, and let's talk about that because this is a running series like my wife said of the eight natural remedies mm -hmm. and this is coined from uh, one of the authors that we'll be talking about Ellen G. White who mentions this uh, in a book called Councils on Health, page 90. Mm. And uh, so therefore, and there's an acronym, so what are the eight natural remedies, honey? And there's an acronym for people to remember those eight natural remedies. Let's walk them through that, honey. Okay, well that acronym is New Star. Okay. I like that, that word anyway, but there was a gentleman that was having a time trying to remember the acronym or trying to put together these eight natural remedies and so he kind of coined it in this word called New Star. Okay. And actually the N stands for nutrition. The E stands for exercise. The W stands for water. The S, sunshine. The T, temperance. A, air. R, rest. And T, trust in divine guidance. Now, mm -hmm. of course, when you look at this word, new start, I like what David says in the Psalms. I thank you, God, you're so wonderfully and magnificently made. Yes, he And it goes so much along with this program, American Idol. And so <laughs> with that in mind, you know, that really that T, uh, trust in divine guidance, is mm -hmm. at the end of that word. Mm -hmm. But really and truly, we all know that unless the T, trust in divine guidance, is first and right. foremost. There's no way that the rest of it's going to work. Yeah, okay? absolutely. So that's very good. And we're going to walk through each of those eight uh, health principles for the next coming weeks. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, today is going to be one of those, we're actually going to cover two of those principles uh, in one program. As one of my pathfinders used to say years ago, we're going to kill two stones with one bird. <laughs> so we're going to be talking about American Idol exercise in addition to also air as well. So oh. we're going to talk about that as well. Well, you've got two main references. We talked about that before. The two main references of individuals that we are really want to be looking at for getting that reference to the information we need to have for this particular program. And who are those references again? Okay, the two main references we'll be using for the eight natural remedies uh, series. Number one is God's Word. Uh, God's Word is the standard of truth for healthful living as far as uh, that is concerned and other Bible doctrines as well. And the second reference is uh, Alan White, an author, has been well known to be inspired by God by millions of people around the world mm. uh, based on the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C., the most translated author in the United States, second in the world. And people who follow the counsel of this author, along with God's Word, has, has uh, a degree of health and longevity than the rest of the population, Seventh-day Adventist Christians. So therefore, we're going to share with the people what seven Adventists have known for years and other people have incorporated to live longer lives for Jesus Christ. Well, you made a comment, and that was that God's Word actually talks about 
physical activity. And so where do we go from there? You know that somebody's going to say, is that really in the Word of is God? Is that really in the Word is of God? Is that really there? Exercise, Why don't we, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, you know, God's Word has a lot to say about exercise. Uh, God's Word talks about we should exercise discerning truth and error. Mm -hmm. uh, the Bible says that we should run with patience. The Bible says we should walk in the light. So those are good physical activities, right, honey? I mean, <laughs> yeah. you know, exercise, yeah, yeah, yeah. run and walk. Uh, but again, um, that's from a spiritual standpoint. I want to turn to the book, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4. And in these programs for the next coming weeks, we'll be using God's word as our standard of truth. So I advise you to have your Bibles ready. Mm. And if you don't, uh, you won't just want to jot these texts down. But let's put exercise in its proper perspective. 1 Timothy chapter 4. And I'm going to look at verse 8 and also verse 7. Verse 8. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that is now is and of that which is to come. Exercise thyself unto godliness. Mm. There's a lot of people mm. out there, honey, uh, they're exercising every day or every other day, and they want to make sure they get that exercise in, and that's good. But again, what's even more important is to exercise godliness, piety, reverence, holy, all right? So therefore, let's put things in a proper perspective. We're not negating that exercise is not important. It is body to exercise, but again, to exercise godliness, is even more important still because it's preferable for all things. So it has a good balance as far as in relationship to the spiritual versus the physical. So you're saying that you can get really so caught up in the exercise activity until that takes prominence. Yes. And so you're just saying that. And that we neglect the exercising of being oh, yeah. godly Christian oh, yeah. because oh, yeah. we're so focused on the physical exercise. Mm -hmm. So uh, this verse brings out that point. Ah, okay, mm -hmm. okay. Now, looking at exercise from a biblical perspective again, mm -hmm. let's go to the book of the Bible, which is Genesis and chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. We're going to look at something else when it comes to uh, exercising. Genesis chapter 2. Mm -hmm. Verse 15, And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. So God instructed Adam and Eve, our first parents, not only to just eat grapes and fruits or whatever, but they were also there to work the garden, to dress it, that means physical activity, and to keep it. That means to preserve, to attend to the garden as well. So they were engaged in physical activity. Well, you know, we already talked about in the area of nutrition, how important it was that God put the food in the first book of the Bible, how important it was. Now, here he is mm -hmm. speaking also about activity levels. That's right. Absolutely. So Adam and Eve did not just eat fruits and vegetables. They walked around in the garden and they and, did some and, exercise. And they were working. They were exercising <laughs> those bodies. That's right. What about uh, research? What's the, the, the newest research that actually talks about <clears throat> inactivity? Yes. Um, Stephen Blair probably is one of the world's most premier experts on exercise. As a matter of fact, he is the scientific research for the U.S. Surgeon General as far as exercise and health in the United States. Mm. And he says, succinctly put, that inactivity is this nation's number one public enemy for the 21st century. Wow. There's been wow. numerous studies on inactivity in relationship to predicting mortality, also exercise or activity and its impact on mental clarity. Mm. Alzheimer's and dementia. And so uh, therefore, there's a lot of information as far as inactivity in relationship to 60% of deaths attributed to inactivity. So therefore, that's why it's very important to exercise. We have a graphic of a muscle, because we need to look at this and see what really happens when we exercise our muscle. Let's go to the screen at this time. Our muscles have many bundles within muscle fibers. So when we exercise, we move our muscles, we walk, and we move our arms, these muscle fibers, they ex expand, they also contract. 
And with that in mind, we have the blood vessels there as well. So therefore, when we walk, when we move our legs, our arms, our bodily muscles, our blood vessels, of course, are now stimulated and increases circulation, increases blood flow. That's why exercising our muscles is very critical for blood circulation as well. Okay, we talked about God. Okay. And um, the activity in the garden. Right. We talked about researchers and That's activity. Right. Mm -hmm. And so now the other person we're talking about is Ellen G. White. And oh, what does she yeah. have to say yes. about inactivity? Uh, well, she says quite a bit about inactivity. Of course, uh, those who follow her counsel, along with God's word, has shown to be uh, more healthier than most of the American population. She has a profound statement on inactivity. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the screen at this time. I call it rusting away. More people die for want of exercise than through over fatigue. Very many more rust out than wear out. Council on Health, mm -hmm. page 173. So that's very profound, okay? So of course, a lot of people are over fatigue and workaholics, but what's even more critical of those who are not doing anything, mm -hmm. American Idol, mm -hmm. rusting out. So honey, Let's get the people moving here. What are some of the things that people can do to increase their activity level? Let's help them, help them out. Well, first of all, I brought my friend along with me that okay. we use a lot when we're doing our programs in the community, weight loss programs. And let me just go ahead and bring that up first because a lot of times people are so surprised at when we talk about weight. Oh, my goodness. Okay, now, okay. You know, what, now, okay. now this is five pounds of fat. Just five pounds. Five pounds, okay, and it's heavy. It's assimilation. It's not really fat, yeah. but it's assimilation. And believe it or not, people always stop at our table when they see this, and they'll say, oh, my goodness, five pounds of fat. Oh, my goodness. Okay. But you know what? From inactivity, we can put that weight on. That's true. The name of the game is to get active. Yeah. But guess what? This is five pounds gained. But how about five pounds lost? lost. That's right. Now, how right. can we lose those five pounds uh, that we are we showing you right now? And that is... When we talk about activity level, one of the things that we like to do, we have, first of all, our stretch bands and stuff. We okay. love to just, you know, we have all kinds of stuff at our house that we actually use. And stretch bands are one of them. These are real inexpensive. You can get them up at any at, of your at Walmart, uh, any of your stores. Any of your stores, store, you can actually get those, stores, yeah. the bands. You put them under your feet, and you actually stretch. You're stretching a muscle. It has the sheet that you it's can got, have a program absolutely. you can work out with that. Very yeah. lightweight, yeah. And then... Of course, people say, well, you know, I don't have money for that. You know, I ain't got time for that. So let's, how about, <laughs> how, about, how about while you're sitting there watching TV, you can get just your regular water bottle. These like 16-ounce water bottles. And while you're watching TV, you can oh, actually okay. just do some stretching just Moving with those, those alone. You know what I'm saying? Increase circulation. Okay. Down. Oh, yeah. You know, any kind of activity is better than no activity at all. Okay. And, of course, I have on me my pedometer. My pedometer is number uno. I mean, I put my pedometer on my nightstand at mm -hmm. night when I go to bed. In the morning, I put the pedometer on. And the name of the game for me is just to increase that activity. As I watch the numbers on the pedometer increase, right. then I can really see what's going on. But I think we also have a graphic that talks about the pedometer Yeah, let's as well. talk about the value of the pedometer. Let's go to the screen at this time. The value of the pedometer. These little devices were shown to increase physical activity by just over 2,000 steps per day. So when people put a pedometer on, of course, you increase your steps, about 2,000 steps per day to keep people to start moving. Uh, last graph we want to show is uh, we had the biggest lose at First Church in mm -hmm. Huntsville, Alabama. Mm -hmm. We're in our second season. By the time you see this, we probably be in our third season. And one of the things we did is we went and moved them to the gym. This is a six weeks course. Mm -hmm. So let's go to the screen at this time and let's talk about uh, what's going on here, honey. Well, I tell you what, we had uh, 70 some people, 76 people that actually were involved this year with our Biggest Loser program, and we are exercising. We had to go in there, they all have pedometers on. That's right. We have a, a walking tape we're actually using, and you can kind of see we're having fun. And by the way, the little girl in the front, I mean, she just jumped on out there with her mama yeah. and just started exercising with us, although it was an adult program. That's right. She, you, she hung with us for can, the last six weeks. Yep, you can see that anybody coming up in there is going to actually want to do mm. what's going on. And mm. so their name of the game was actually to get them a moving. That's right. And speaking about getting people moving, Curtis. Moving to the kitchen, huh? I know we got to move into the kitchen because, you know, after we get the 
finish cooking, we mm. got to go and take our walk. All That's right? right. And so, you know, it's time for us to go into that kitchen and we're going to be making a wonderful recipe, a tofu stuffed matacotti, and we're going to do mini herbal bread. Get your paper and your pencil and meet us in the kitchen. 